Hello and good day. This is Scott with Wet Edge, and I would like to welcome you to our watercolor from a designer's perspective video series. And it's a beautiful day here in Northern California, and I'm here with my good friend Chuck Bauman from Creative Environments. Chuck, want you um, first of all thank you so much uh, for your time and sharing uh, your wisdom with us as far as watercolor. Just want you to go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Scott, first of all, thank you very much. Okay. I I, um, I always love the opportunity to talk about my favorite subject, which is swimming pools. Um, this year happens to mark my 60th year in the swimming pool industry Fantastic. here in Northern California because of my family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this um, particular project that we're at today is in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. It's a gorgeous day, perfect day to be out by the pool. Yep. Uh, this particular project was one that I uh, spent about a year in the making to finally get it to fruition to where we are. Today. But that wasn't your fault. No, 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 no. no <laughs> it didn't no. take a year. To, no, <laughs> didn't no. take them a year to do it. It just a no. year to even get permission, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, it took a year to get the permission. It actually took us five weeks to turn around the project and start to finish. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So let's 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 dive into it. What about this project really speaks to you? And what are the, some of the design elements as they interact with the watercolor that you really really like? I, as we look at the pool right now, it has a great, refreshing look to it. Uh, the watercolor is a deep, rich blue. To me, I think every homeowner, when they're purchasing a pool and having one built, they're thinking it's going to be 80 degrees mm -hmm. all the time. It's going to be spotless inside, and it's going to have this blue oasis, refreshing look like they're in the Caribbean. Yes. So that's what we uh, were looking for when we came up with this particular color. Mm -hmm. We also, in the design elements of the swimming pool, we were trying to complement both the house architecture along with the, um, the taste and the lifestyle of the particular clients that live here. Okay. So let me, let me ask you, um, when you, this project and other projects, I imagine, you know, people want to know, one of the first things uh, that we've talked before is they want to know what that watercolor is going to look like or what my tile is. Do you design around that from beginning or kind of walk us through what's a better way to approach it, if there is one? I think there is. Uh, based on my experience, it's probably uh, the very first question out of a client's mouth. We, we're signing the contract and immediately they want to make those decisions because they don't want to be the ones that are holding back the decision making and the process of building the pool when in fact they're the last parts of the conversation and the design element of the pool. We didn't go in with this pool in the understanding it was going to be a blue finish with this particular tile. Mm -hmm. We actually first knock down the idea of what the concept was, the pool. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the pool rises up out of the patio mm -hmm. and it sits at 18 inches off the deck. I really like this. Deck. This is nice. This, this was because of how compressed the area is that we're working in and yet it makes it feel more expansive. Mm -hmm. Once we take down some of these design elements and what the client's needs and wants are, we then enable ourselves to focus in on what colors are. Insofar as the choices, because of the Wet Edge product, mm -hmm. we have so many choices to choose from, and literally I lay them out on the table and I'll sit back and allow the client to pick up what most interests them. Okay, so you settled on the design, which is again, a beautiful design. Thank you. Um, do you feel that there are certain colors uh, in pool finishes that lend themselves to specific designs. Like for instance, you know, you would classify this as sort of a classic geometric shape. Yes. Do you find that the lighter colors tend to complement those or, you know, just seem to fit better? Not that they're the only fit, but they seem to fit better and then maybe like darker colors for another, another type design? It, that's a great question, yeah. Scott. W what, what I find is there's so much more than just the classic design of the swimming pool. It is the elements and materials that make up the decking, the coping material that go around it, the raised bomb beam on the backside if that's part of a design element. Um, all of those materials are what's truly driving the interior look of the water. Uh, in our particular market, uh, 
one of the products we use a lot of is the Connecticut Bluestone that comes mm. from the East Coast. Yep. And when we put that on a on a job, even though it's an automatic cover, mm -hmm. it might be a grayer tone, more natural looking color finish instead of this. Okay. Uh, that sounds awesome, Chuck. Now let's getting back to this project. Yes. Let's talk a little bit why you think you know this specific finish and color really works with materials that, that end up being chosen. Well, let's go back to some of my initial conversations with a client when we were designing the swimming pool. They wanted something refreshing in their backyard. They wanted to hear water falling, so we put the, the uh, shear falls on here. They wanted to um, have something that looked beautiful and blue. Blue was the driving color that was most important to them. Okay. And, and I think this one here fit the bill perfectly. And do you, do you feel that because, you know, we have this darker blue and they wanted something refreshing, like if they went with something darker, it kind of maybe take away the, the pop or the, the, the uh, influence of the, of the tile? You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what truly drives all of this. Mm -hmm. And as much as I would love to tell you, wet edge is yeah. the, the driving factor. No. <laughs> who's, who's driving this is the decisions that are made on the tile. Okay. Once they make a decision on the tile, and the tile needs to complement whatever the, co the coping material or decking material is, because those two work hand in hand, now the tile is complemented by the plaster finish, whatever that finish is. In this case, they wanted something smooth as a plaster, okay. so we, we showed them the premiere of, of a product. Um, they wanted something that complemented the blue tile that we've selected, and it's a multicolored glass blue tile with kind of an iridescent. Mm -hmm. This particular product has a uh, abalone shell. It has mm -hmm. some recycled multicolored glass yes. in it, mm -hmm. and then it's honed to a smooth finish, mm -hmm. so they have the best of all worlds of what they're looking for in this particular project. And for those of you who may be wondering, just so you, so you know, it's, this is our Azure Treasure and our Primera Stone line. Now, you actually brought up something that just caught my interest. Yeah. Now, you, we both know that you can take a sample dry, and ah. you have the color of the, of the cement, yeah. but yet it doesn't necessarily equate to the water color you yeah. get. Like, for instance, yeah. our plum yeah. is, is, you know, kind of a purplish, kind of yeah. plummy colored cement, but there's gold pebble in it. But the water color that it gives is, is not, it won't get purple water. You actually get this nice aquamarine. Yep. So when you're, when you're talking about the, the, the tile being the driving force, are you concerned with the actual color of the cement in the sample and not so much with the watercolor that it casts or vice versa? I, I think that's the um, interesting part of your particular project, your website and your brochures because not only are you showing us what the color of the sample looks like and I have all the little swatches of the sample and we put them underneath the sink and we compare them, wet them up and put yeah. them next to the, the tile. But you also show the different depths of the water from the, the entry steps to the shallow end to the deep end. Yes. All of those come into play because I will get a client that will show me a color chip and say, that's the color that I want. And the reality is they, they're not quite sure what the color is, and especially when it's wrapped up in the entire pool, yes. they realize the benefits of the stairs being a little bit different color, which is why we accent our entry stairs with a trim tile mm -hmm. so that they can see it. Mm -hmm. And then they realize the benefits as they look into the water, the different richness of the deep blues that they get. Gotcha. Yeah. So in this, in the instance of this project, yeah. were, the clients, were the clients more concerned about the actual color of this Azure Treasure, the sample itself, the cement itself, or the watercolor that it cast, or both? Oh, boy, that, now you're asking some really good <laughs> questions here. I, well, this is what we do with every day, so I, that's why we're here. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to stump me. I, I know, know where I we're know. going with this. Okay. Um, let me tell you exactly what happened with the client, because mm -hmm. when we signed the contract, they said, I want to know the color. And I said, why don't you sit back, but here is a wet edge brochure. Mm -hmm. And I gave them the brochure so that they can kind of live with it. Right along with it, I gave them a tile brochure, thinking that they would in the evenings kind of thumb through it as the mm -hmm. project goes together. In this particular project, they were concerned about a blue color for the water. 
And so when we shared the different samples, and I went from uh, the Ultima line to the Luna line to uh, the different levels of Pebble, mm -hmm. and then ultimately into this Prism, uh, or the uh, Primera, Primera, excuse mm -hmm. me, uh, color, they immediately, I put them all on the table. There must have been 20 or 30 of them. Mm -hmm. And I watched them pluck the ones that most interest them mm -hmm. with a swatch of the glass tile on the coffee table as we were having this conversation. Mm -hmm. And subconsciously, I'm watching which ones and I'm registering those are the colors they're most liking. Mm -hmm. From that standpoint, they pared it down to a simple three or four and then it was a husband, wife, and I told them, listen, I'm not a marriage counselor. You guys have to decide this because they did ask me, mm -hmm. Chuck, which one would you use? I think every one of your products are excellent. And in the right application, in the right setting, mm -hmm. any one of the colors work for that distinct client. In this case, this blue was exactly what they were looking for. They they went back and forth with a pebbled uh, uh, colored blue mm -hmm. versus this. They wanted something that was so smooth mm -hmm. that it, it it's just, it was a perfect fit. It Excellent. really was, Scott. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Kind of makes you, though, wonder, go back, well, you know, yearn for those days where you just said, okay, you have white plaster or gray. <laughs> Pick. <laughs> well, I, I, and I often tell that story when I get into this conversation, my dad started building swimming pools in 1955, which mm -hmm. was my first exposure to the pool business. Mm -hmm. And in those days, the choices were very simple. You had a six by six aqua blue tile. Mm -hmm. That was the only choice. There wasn't a multitude of aqua blue, just mm -hmm. one choice. There was a white coping stone. Mm -hmm. There wasn't grays and blues and greens. It was yeah. white. Mm -hmm. And there was a white plaster. And that was the only choice people had for years. And it wasn't until companies like yours come along and create nah. all of these. What's that? You <laughs> it's don't, not our fault. <laughs> oh. No, I, I see it as such a benefit. Oh, because, yeah. and, and so many, Scott, it, it, this is real important because I, there are so many builders like myself that don't consider ourselves just pool builders. We are yeah. water crafters. Yes. And we're artisans absolutely. at what we do to be able to work with all the different materials, pick up on the personality of the homeowner, try to help them um, develop the ideas that they envision in their idea in their head when they're thinking of that particular pool in their backyard. And now we get the choice of so many different colors and all the products that you guys offer, yeah. all the tile products, all the coping products, and you put all that together and this is what happens. And in a lot of my projects, when they turn out like this, I tell the clients we've created magic in their backyard. And that magic comes about because of all the elements. The plaster interior is the finishing touches. Up until this moment of plastering the pool, this pool had very little personality. It was a gray gunite finish, yeah. hard to envision what it's going to look like. And then all of a sudden, boom, we have this gorgeous There finish. you have it. Yeah. There it's, you have it. Now, before we close, Chuck, I just want to, you know, if there are any other just little design element, even it doesn't even have to be necessarily relating to the, the finish itself that really that you really like that you want to point out, you know, just to, just to help the folks out. Maybe they'll see something like, yeah, I want that in my pool. Well, I, l let me first frame this up because I think it's very very important part of this project. This was a team effort mm -hmm. by a great group of artisans, and it wasn't simply my team. Uh, it initially started with the designer that we introduced to the client, Peter Koenig, mm -hmm. and that's what he does. He simply designs simply. I shouldn't say it that way. He designs. <laughs> he makes some, it look simple. <laughs> he makes it look simple, but he did design some gorgeous, creative backyards. Mm -hmm. Then I worked with a landscape contractor buddy of mine that I brought to the table on this job, Michael Teb, mm -hmm. and Michael is uh, an artist to himself and, and all the projects that he and I have been able to put together. And then, of course, my team of pool construction artisans that dig and steal and plumb and make all these elements work the way that it does. Mm -hmm. Again, one of the reasons why I say it created magic. And so far as this specific job, what makes this job work so much better than um, somebody else's job that, that was just a quick template design? Mm -hmm. 
Number one, it was uniquely designed specifically for this client. So Peter sat down with the client and had a whole shopping list of ideas of what they were trying to accomplish for goals and planning the pool. Mm -hmm. He then created this design concept here. We took it to the next level and and how we incorporated our little touch and spin on it. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that uh, were designed here came as the job evolved. Mm -hmm. um, same with the landscaping. When Michael came to the job, his team put in plants that were of his design and liking that best suited the client's needs and their interests. And I think at the end of the day, as I keep saying, it was magic. It was a perfect job for a wonderful client. Mm -hmm. The irony of this job, we did it in five weeks. And two of those weeks at the tail end, the client was on vacation in Canada. We were building the project. Every day something was happening. And I was emailing uh, daily reports and pictures to them so that when they walked home, the pool was, or when they <laughs> flew home, the pool was finished. Water was in it. They were so excited. And, and uh, they were the first into the pool. Right. Yeah, it was a great job. Cool. So do you might what what specifically like you said there are some things that you tweaked what what, what um, would you like to point out on the we made a little bit of a design uh, element change mm -hmm. these four columns have a stuccoed finish with a uh, a moorish tile um, originally they were designed with a little tiny diamond tile that was blue and the client took it upon themselves to go out and find these imported uh, hand painted tile so they had a participation in the process. Instead mm -hmm. of sitting down, signing a contract, and writing checks, and the builder give them what they think they were going to get, yeah. um, the end result is, is that the client has ownership of this particular job because of those hand-painted tile. They brought them to us in a box. I selected each one as to where they went so that we didn't have a, yeah. a double up of the tile. So the stucco finish... Um, you know, we, we added uh, some components to the automatic cover, um, the elevation of the spa, and the knife edge was Peter's design. We took it to a new level or another level when we, we got a chance to talk to the client. We put an in-floor cleaning system so it didn't take away from the architecture of the pool by having a robotic cleaner yeah. in a small pool. This pool's only 13 by 24 feet. It's yeah. not a terribly large pool but it fills up their backyard and complements their yard and their lifestyle. Okay. Actually, you just said something. A question just yeah. occurred to me. I would love to hear your opinion. On pools this size uh, for this environment, Yeah. do you find that the darker colors really have a, that big of effect on water temperature? And do you tell oh. clients, that? is that part of your do you guide client, clients my, in that my, regard? Part of my presentation is certainly there's a passive solar complement that goes on when you have a darker finish. Mm -hmm. um, we can accomplish a lot of the same by having an automatic cover on the pool which radiates heat down into the water. Mm -hmm. Darker the pool cover, the more heat absorption you have. Mm -hmm. uh, by putting an in-floor cleaning system, we tend to drive that water to the bottom of the pool mm -hmm. so it enhances the uh, depth in which that heat travels. It's a giant storage battery. Mm -hmm. In this particular market and area of the Bay Area, it cools down because we're close to the ocean. Yep. So it cools down a little bit in the evening time. The cover enhances trapping that heat. And then, of course, the next day, the solar implications enhance it more. The coloration of this, a small pool, we've done small... Um, vanishing edge type pools, if we're looking for a reflective look, a mirrored look, mm -hmm. the darker finish is always the color of choice. Mm -hmm. When we're looking for refreshing oasis, mm -hmm. the lighter blues are more of those colors of choice. And that's, you're, you're kind of taking a lead from your clients as I sit and listen and, and talk to them of what their expectations are in the mm -hmm. swimming pool, I'm gathering these little pearls of, of information that they're dropping behind. And some of those pearls are what they're expecting, that refreshing look. If they mm -hmm. say refreshing, I already know we're going to go in the blue coloration. Yeah. If they're saying we want to see this reflective look to capture the look of the mountains in the background or the vista 
or the vanishing edge, I know we're going to go with a darker finish. All right. Does that help you? That, that, that absolutely helps me. Yeah. Absolutely good. helps me. Good, good, good. Well, I think we're going to stop it there. Chuck, thank you so much for, ah. again for your time. It's been a pleasure Scott, for me. Scott, it's and, been my pleasure. And uh, thank you for your time. We, as always, we hope we, uh, you find these videos helpful and informative. And so once again, thank you from all of us at Wet Edge, your pool finish resource.